All right, two more concepts. And this is the first of the two. State the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at the center of a circular wire loop. So we're going to be interested in the magnetic field right smack here, right in the middle of that wire loop. And um, you can determine the direction of that by putting your thumb in the direction of this little current segment here with the, the right hand roll that we talked about for individual wires. Just think about this as a long straight wire right here. Forget everything else for the moment. Stick your th uh, thumb in the direction of the current in that wire and then curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic fields produced by that wire. Where your fingers intersect the center of the loop, your fingers will be pointing this way. So that tells you that the magnetic field must be in that direction. And, uh, and this is shown here in this diagram. But what's the magnitude of the magnetic field? You might expect it to be similar in some ways to the magnetic field due to a long straight wire. And in fact it is. Uh, it has a mu naught in it, it has the current in that loop, but now it's divided by twice the radius of the loop. And um, so very similar to the result that we had before. And the direction is perpendicular to the plane of the loop and is given by right hand rule number two as shown right here. Mu naught I over two R. Uh, equation for magnetic field, the long straight current carrying wire is given by mu naught I over two pi R. But the magnetic field at the center of the a single closed circular loop is given by mu naught I over two R. What's the difference? Just that pi. It looks similar, there's an important difference between these other than the factor of pi. What is it? Mu naught factor is different? No, they're both the same. Variable r represents two different lengths. Well, what's little r? Um, actually, we use big R in this case for a singular closed loop. Um, and it's really this one that's the key here. Little r here for a long straight wire represents the distance from the wire where we're interested in the magnetic field. And this big R represents just the radius of the loop. And this equation actually just gives you the magnetic field at a single point, right at the center of that wire loop. All right. Um, lines around the bar magnet re resemble those around the loop. And in fact, that's kind of a hint as to how things work here. The, this wire loop produces a magnetic field that looks like this, and it looks like a bar magnet, and that's a hint, and in fact it's, the hint is, is uh, suggestive and true that the magnetic field of a bar magnet is due to the motion of charges, but not any external current, it's the motion of electrons and their spin around their orbital motion and their spin motion around the atoms. And, um, okay. Again, this is another manifestation of the like currents attract and unlike currents repel idea. I'm going to skip that example. You can read through it if you'd like. Let me do a demo. This is a demonstration of the magnetic field of a solenoid. A solenoid is a cylindrical coil of wire. And represented here, you, can, you might be able to see some windings of wire coming around on the top. They come around along the bottom. And We've actually separated it up into one, two, three, four, five separate coils of wire so you can see what's happening in the interior of the solenoid. If the current comes in from the, from the power source here and goes in a, 
in this direction, then the magnetic field will be toward me. If the, if the current goes in the opposite direction, then the magnetic field will be toward you. But the strong magnetic field will be in the interior of the solenoid. And we'll visualize that magnetic field using these black iron filings that when I energize by pushing this button, when I put a current through this coil, then these iron filings will line up in the direction of the magnetic fields. So what we'll be looking for is, is iron filings that line up like this and come around and then back and, and back in again. The iron filings, um, you won't be able to tell by looking at the iron filings whether the magnetic field is this way or this way in the interior, but you should be able to see that it's lining up along the axis of the solenoid. So I'm just gonna hold this button down for half a second or so, so I don't burn out these wires, but hopefully you'll be able to see the filings line up. Okay, there's a little bit of alignment there. Yep. And you can see um, definitely the alignment of the particles coming through the center of the solenoid starting to come back around the outside. The, the field is much weaker along the outside, so it's more difficult to see um, alignment of the filings outside. But especially here, you can see the, the filings aligning. So that's a magnetic field produced by a solenoid. Solenoids are important in, in some auto lock type of applications where you energize a, a solenoid and that can put an automatic uh, lock up or down as you energize the solenoid. Okay. <clears throat> Last concept. State the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field inside a solenoid. As you saw in the demo, <clears throat> the magnetic fields line up along the axis of the solenoid. And what's a solenoid? It's just a coil of wire. So, so we just take a wire and we wind it Take it, wind it around a tin can or whatever, then remove the tin can, and, and then you have a, a, a solenoid. Um, you're going to be able to find the direction of the magnetic field using the right hand rule, uh, number two, if you put your thumb in the direction of this little piece of current right on the front side of the solenoid, put your thumb in that direction, and then curl your fingers around, that'll give the direction of the magnetic fields around this wire and when your fingers are out, your, th your thumb, you have to think about it being right where this wire is. So now my fingers are outside of the solenoid, but when I'm in this configuration here, my fingers are inside the solenoid and my fingertips are pointing in the direction of the magnetic field through that solenoid, which is in this direction. Shown here is the same thing. Here we've got currents that are coming out. And I've just taken a, a slice of the solenoid right down through the center of that solenoid. Here's where a wire current is coming out of the board. Here's where wires come around over the top of the solenoid and then is going in. And uh, and as we've worked out with the right hand rule, the magnetic field inside the solenoid is not only pointing to the left, but it's also quite strong. As we saw in the demo, the magnetic field out here is weak. And the magnetic field, field inside is strong. So um, state the magnitude and direction. The magnitude is mu naught times n, little n, times i. What's i? Let's talk about the things that we know about first. i is the current in the solenoid. So we've got uh, a current that's running through this wire, and we've got coil and coil and coil after uh, coil after coil after coil of the wire, but it's just the, the current in that wire that gets looped around a bunch of times. Um, the mu naught is the magnetic, what do we call it? Permeability, magnetic permeability. Four pi times 10 to the minus seven. 
And then the only new thing really here is the number of turns per unit length. So if you have um, a solenoid that's say 10 centimeters long, and let's say this looks to have maybe say 30 windings, the number of times you've wound this around, 30 windings, then in this particular case, little n, the number of turns per unit length would be 30 turns or 30 windings per unit length. Well, the length is uh, 10 centimeters. Uh, we convert that to meters at 0.1 meters. And so multiply numerator and denominator by 10, and that's 300 per meter. So this is measured in inverse meters or per meter, number of windings per unit length. And um, so if you want a strong magnetic field inside of a solenoid, then there's two ways to get it. You can put a strong current in there, put a lot of current in those windings, or you can use um, a really thin wire so that you can fit a large number of windings per unit length in it. Or you can actually use a thick wire and then stack the windings on top of each other to increase the magnetic field inside of that solenoid. <coughs> and the direction is along the solenoid axis. So that what I mean by the axis is uh, this way or that way. And is given by right hand rule number two, um, like we talked about right here. Okay, uh, this is a demonstration that we hinted at in the earlier demonstration. This is a, it's a solenoid. It's made out of, um, it's a definitely redneck demonstration. The nail and some wire. This is a demonstration of how you can create a magnetic field by winding a wire around a, a nail. This is just a standard nail that you'd use in construction. And then attaching the two ends of the wire to a nine, uh, nine volt battery. So if we connect it up, you can see that now we can pick up these paper clips. We can even pick up, pick up a steel ball. We can try it out on these uh, coins. This is an American quarter. No go. This is a Canadian quarter. And it picks, picks up the Canadian quarter, which has some nickel in it. And unfortunately, here in the United States, this is also Canadian. Um, we uh, have gotten a little bit cheaper, I guess, and no more nickel in the, in the quarters. If you uh, disconnect the source, then there's some residual magnetism in the nail itself. So we no longer have an electromagnet be, uh, produced by the wires winding around the, the, the nail, but the nail has be become magnetized because of the magnetic field produced by the wires previously, and we can uh, use that to pick up a paper, paper clip. So that's an electromagnet. This is an example of a solenoid, which is uh, a cylindrical windings of wire around a, a cylinder. Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, this is um, the reason behind the operation of solenoid powered locks. This thing is being energized and unenergized and, and uh, you've got to coil a wire in this, in this powered lock that, um, and, and a magnetic core that responds to that magnetic field that pops the, the lock back and forth. Just a little bit about ferromagnetism, just a hint. Uh, some of you will study this much more deeply. Um, like we did in the demonstration, when you wrap the windings of wire around the nail, you actually get the magnetic domains, the um, Electrons spin and orbital motion of the electrons gives rise to the magnetic field. 
So what these little arrows represent are domains, regions of the ferromagnetic material that are orient in which the electrons are uh, spins and orbital motions are oriented in a particular direction. And it's that motion of the electrons around the atoms that creates the current that produces the, the magnetic field just like you have with um, the magnetic field produced by wire in a loop or in a solenoid that produces an axial field. Uh, these magnetic fields, uh, these magnetic domains line up if you, uh, if you wrap some coils around this like we did in the nail and you can get um, an orientation of the magnet with the, the domains more or less lining up in the same direction to give you a permanent magnet. Uh, this is important in uh, magnetic recording. So if you have a, a tape, just a cassette tape uh, or eight track tape, depending how, how, on how old you are, a VHS tape, uh, it's a piece of plastic, plastic backing with a magnetic coating and the residual fringe field from this horseshoe shaped magnet um, magnetizes the surface and then the head can actually pick up the little magnetic um, domains of the tape. Also um, electromagnets are used for uh, maglev trains where, where you have magnetic fields along the guideway and that actually levitates the, the train.